Well, bon appetit, if you're eating something anyway. Um, so <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk about osteoporosis and looking at uh, how you can take care of your bones nutritionally. Uh, hopefully before it uh, comes to the point where you have to take some medications for that or deal with that. We're uh, going to look at um, things other than calcium that you can do for your bones and you need to start really early as we'll mention later on. Uh, the recommendation for women is to start thinking about osteoporosis uh, when you're four years old which means that the parents are going to be have to be very involved and recognize the need to um, address bone issues very early in the daughter's life or um, you know that kind of thing so anyway but before we do uh, I wanted to look at some vocabulary for the workplace uh, because someday you guys will actually be working or I guess I guess most of you maybe are because you're taking an online class but anyway uh, maybe in the workplace you can use some of these or you may even fit some of these words because you do this in the workplace so let's look at some of these um, blame storming let me just read them blame storming is sitting around in a group discussing why a deadline was missed or a project failed and who was responsible. It certainly wasn't you, so who was responsible? A mouse potato. Mouse potato is the online wired generation's answer to the couch potato. So you could be a mouse potato because you sit around watching nutrition videos all the time. Um, a stress puppy. Stress puppy is a person who seems to thrive on being stressed out and whiny. I know none of you are whiny. Uh, we never receive whiny emails from students. Anyway, <clears throat> ono second. An ono second is that minuscule fraction of time in which you realize you just made a big mistake, like after hitting send on an email by mistake. That's an ono second. Okay. A cube farm. A cube farm is an office filled with cubicles. Hopefully you won't work in one of those, but maybe you will. A prairie dogging. Prairie dogging is when someone yells or drops something loudly in a cube farm and people's heads pop up all over the walls to see what's going on. That's a prairie dogging. Crop dusting. Crop dusting is sur surreptitiously passing gas while passing through a cube farm. Sorry. Uh, osmosis. Well, most of you have heard, heard of osmosis, but maybe not osmosis. This is the process by which some people seem to absorb success and advancement by kissing up to the boss rather than working hard. So, who knows. And then the last one is 404. 404 is someone who is clueless. Uh, from the World Wide Web error message 404 not found, meaning that the requested site could not be located. So, if you know somebody who's clueless, then you can say there are 404 and they wouldn't know. So, just to your neighbor, say 404 real quickly. Uh, of course, at Mount Hood, we never know any 404s. Uh, in, well, you know, whatever. Osteoporosis. Um, basically, it's when your bones become brittle. And, and just like the word implies, is porosity of the bone, where they get uh, porous. Uh, there's different, you know, reasons for osteoporosis. The most common one is postmenopausal. Uh, because for women, you know, osteoporosis is basically a woman's uh, issue. Uh, even though men at advanced age can get osteoporosis or do get osteoporosis, uh, it has to be a lot older. But the postmenopausal issue deals with estrogen, and then it can be a medication-induced uh, glucocorticoids and that kind of thing can be a problem. 
but we're going to we're going to spend our time talking mostly about postmenopausal because that's where nutrition is going to play the uh, biggest role uh, and this is the most common one so let's go through and and look at osteoporosis basically what you're looking at now uh, is what is considered normal honeycomb structure of bone uh, and in the uh, cavities there uh, is where the bone marrow is going to be uh, and so this is kind of the lattice work or honeycomb that basically is going to be in the peripheral uh, parts of the bone and it helps uh, reduce stress because it's going to you know you look at the the uh, stress on the bone uh, where it kind of angles from the hip and so forth and there's a lot of stress there and, and so just like a bridge those uh, the trabecular bone there is going to distribute the stress and uh, the stress in different directions so that you don't have stress all in one area but also it leaves the uh, area for the bone marrow to be now this would be osteoporosis where you can see that the trabecular bone is is being thinned out uh, and there's there's not as much uh, honeycombing so the strength of that bone is going to be reduced uh, quite a bit uh, what's the prevalence uh, 10 percent nationwide over age of 50 I mean that's quite a number of people uh, but a lot of people don't know uh, and then 80 percent women uh, but 40 percent four percent are at risk but they a lot of them don't know because they don't get it checked and they don't even think about it um, here's uh, you know the area of the country and you can see uh, organs kinda up there Washington and Utah I'm not sure why they're uh, high in uh, low bone density but um, anyway uh, organs not doing well and it, whatever the reason is uh, I'm not sure but um, 18 billion year cost, um, organ costs 90 billion million dollars. So, uh, but nutrition can reduce this. So our healthcare costs can be reduced if we uh, take heed early enough, you know, in our life to do this. Um, again, you can see it's a, it is somewhat of an age-related issue for men. You can see over 80, it starts going up, but for women. Uh, it really starts going up, uh, you know, after menopause, and whenever that will be, uh, it, it starts going way up and then continues on um, with age. Uh, again, this would be considered a silent killer because if you don't get it checked, you would never know if you have uh, a problem with thinning of the bone. So it's it's pretty important for women to look at their bone density maybe even before they hit menopause um, because bone loss occurs starting um, for women in their late 20s or early 30s I mean that's just pretty normal uh, and so depending on how much density you have uh, then you could lose bone and have significant bone loss in your 40s uh, if you're very thin boned and uh, that kind of thing, thin person, uh, been thin all your life, you may not have a lot of bone density to work with. And so in your 40s, you could be, could be an issue. So if you're really thin, I might suggest uh, getting a bone density test and seeing where you're at. Um, but uh, we'll talk about how we can improve that density uh, if you're, as you're younger, before you hit that late 20s and early 30s. Um, but even if you're in your 30s or 40s, you can slow down bone loss by becoming more active and, and getting good nutrition. Uh, you're still going to lose bone, but it may not be as significant if you um, heed some of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, so the consequences of osteoporosis is basically fra fractures are the big ones. Uh, and it's not so much that you're just walking and all of a sudden break, break. It's when you stumble or fall. Um, and you try to catch yourself or you take a wrong step and you just kind of bend the bone a little bit differently if you have osteoporosis it's going to fracture pretty easily um, usually in the hip hips are pretty common uh, wrists are pretty common because when you fall you try to catch yourself and you break your wrist and then your vertebral column is going to become weak 
uh, and even the heaviness of your head can be a problem with that. So here's kind of a structure of bones. You can see where the, the stress is. You can notice that there's no stress here, but as you go up, you know, around the uh, head here of the femur, you can see that uh, the stress increases. And so this is going to be a very high stress area, and this is going to be a very kind of a weaker area. But vertically, you know, it's not a big problem because we can carry a lot of weight vertically. It's, it's the horizontal and, and uh, areas that are going to be the weakest point of the bone. And so you can see here's a common fracture, hip fracture, where it happens right there, where the weakest, it's going to have the highest stress and kind of a weaker point of the bone is where it would occur. Uh, then also in the backbone, dowager's hump. Basically, as you get older, you can see you get a kind of a hump, hump there. And it's because of the compression here uh, of the vertebral column, basically because of the weight of your head and things, and it just doesn't have the strength anymore. Uh, there are some things you can do to prevent that. There are some exercises you can do. Um, so uh, even sitting up straight, that kind of thing, can be an issue with this uh, and can lead to dowager's hump but it's pretty common um, but you know if you catch it early enough and do some things um, to prevent it then it won't happen um, let's talk a little bit about bone structure i know you'll talk a, quite a bit more about it in uh, a and p but let's just talk about it because we're going to refer to some of the cells and things as we go through but the bone structure you know the connective tissue uh, it, the bone is considered a connective tissue it's it's basically um, a ground. The ground substance is very hard because of the minerals and fibers and things like that. But uh, all connective tissue has some type of of, uh, con of uh, 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 ground substance that can can go anywhere from liquid like your blood all the way to bone. That's very hard. Um, but the the minerals are obviously going to be calcium and potassium, magnesium, those kinds of things. Uh, the bone cells, um, these are, are going to be, you know, the osteogenic bone cells are going to be uh, stem cells that are in the bones and the bone marrow. The key ones, though, are going to be the osteoblasts, and they're the ones that are, are going to increase bone density and bone mass. Uh, and then osteocytes uh, are going to be mature bone cells that basically maintain the homeostasis of the bone. They're embedded into lacuna in the bone. And then the osteoclasts are going to be what's going to take bone tissue away. Um, so but osteoblasts and osteoclasts kind of work, are supposed to work together with renewing the bone. So osteoclasts will take bone away and osteoblasts will put it back. So you kind of renew and keep everything kind of fresh. The problem exists when osteoclasts outwork osteoblasts. And so you remove more bone than you replace. And so there are some things that can affect that and, and affect osteoblastic activity. And osteoclasts can increase, especially, you know, the idea is your bone, your, your blood levels of calcium are more important than your bone levels of calcium. So bone, in that sense, would be considered a storage vessel that can be taken from if you need to uh, get calcium into your blood. Because calcium is also used for your nervous system. First priority of your body is to keep you alive. And so if your nervous system and your blood system is deficient, it's going to steal calcium from the bone. And the osteoclasts are then going to outwork the osteoblasts, and you'll start reducing bone mass. So you don't want that to happen. You want to continue to have the osteoblasts and osteoclasts work uh, in a kind of a homeostasis manner so that everything's kind of balanced and that kind of thing. So we'll talk about these cells. And you can see, and you know, you know, on an exam, I'm not going to expect you to remember these pictures or anything, but um, you can see the osteogenic stem cell on the left-hand side is is going to make osteoblasts and then osteocytes and that kind of thing. The osteoclasts, so osteoblasts become osteocytes, and then osteoclasts, you can actually see they're multicellular, which is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, but you'll get more of this in, in AMP. So let's look at, uh, again, looking at the bone structure. 
uh, collagen, protein carbohydrate complexes, so we'll talk about how those can be affected. Uh, hydroxyapatite is going to be the calcium phosphate that's going to make the bones hard. And then calcium carbonate and mineral ions and all those things are going to be part of bone structure that can be affected by osteoclasts if they overwork the osteoblasts. So what is the etiology or the cause? Basically is um, not allowing the bone cells to work as effectively and harmoniously as they should. And that can be a result of reduced nutrient intake or excessive nutrient intake. Either one can, can be an issue in um, you know, how we uh, affect our bone mass. So we'll talk about those. What are some risk factors that you really can't change? There's not much you can do about them, really. You can't change your gender because, again, females are more prone than males. You can't adjust your menopausal age. Um, really and it can happen earlier in some women than than others and later but when it does happen that's when you're going to lose estrogen and that's where you're going to start uh, increasing the speed of bone loss so we'll try to emphasize it's critical to have as much bone mass as possible uh, when you hit menopausal age then you have more to lose and so it's not going to affect you as much uh, genetics, uh, ethnics plays a role. Actually, in this case, uh, uh, white or Caucasian individuals tend to have more of a problem with osteoporosis than other ones. Uh, other groups, um, the bone structure you have, everybody's different in their bone structure, so that's a genetic issue. If you have a history of osteoporosis in your family, then you're at higher risk. So, um, so genetics is going to play a role in the composition of your bones and how it's all structured. Diseases you have in your lifetime, you really can't change that. Uh, you know, what medications you've taken during your lifetime that can affect uh, the bone. And then if you have a history of fractures, you know, maybe that means you have thin bones. So there's really not much you can do about these things. It's just be aware of them and then try to offset them. Uh, with nutrition and exercise as much as you possibly can. Um, here's the uh, idea of uh, where estrogen comes into play is that, you know, for, for women, uh, estrogen is the key for bone loss. And so estrogen is going to increase bone, bone reabsorption. It's also going to affect uh, absorption of calcium from your diet. So estrogen can have an effect on both of those things. So if you, you decrease your estrogen, then you're going to decrease osteoblastic activity. Uh, you're going to uh, decrease bone uh, or calcium absorption and those kinds of things. So it, um, that, that's the, the biggest issues of those. Um, what are some modifiable risk factors that you can control? Uh, you can control your vitamin D level, a low level of vitamin D. Vitamin D is, uh, actually there's some people call for it not to be called a hormone. It's, I mean, not to be called a vitamin, it should be called a hormone um, because it, it tells cells and what to do. So uh, low levels of vitamin D can decrease calcium absorption in your intestinal cells, so you don't get as much calcium into the blood that can be used. And then it can actually decrease um, the osteoblast ability to uh, work with ionization of the calcium in the blood and, and actually deposit it into the bone. So you need to maintain those vitamin D levels. And vitamin D comes from the sun or because in, you know, if you're north of, of San Francisco or Atlanta, Georgia, then the recommendation is to take a supplement of vitamin D because we just don't get enough sunshine and the direction of the sun rays and the amount of sunshine, how often we have our, our body basically covered with uh, you know long sleeve shirts and coats and that kind of thing. So it might be supplementation. Protein, kind of a two-edged sword um, because protein can increase calcium excretion, but uh, it um, also increases bone absorption or calcium absorption. 
Uh, but overall, if you have too much protein, then it can weaken the bones. It can cause calcium to be excreted before it's deposited. So um, you need to monitor and not get too much protein. And then high levels of sodium, again, not over for hypertension that we just talked about, but uh, calcium excretion. So you need to be aware of sodium's role in this issue, too. Um, here's uh, the issue with vitamin D aids in calcium absorption into the intestinal cells and then getting it into the bloodstream. So if you have low vitamin D, then the act of transport can occur. Um, so anyway. Uh, and then this is kind of a, a busy slide, I understand, but the, the whole issue is wherever you see the vitamin D3 here uh, and, uh, you know, where it's going to have an effect, um, then you can see it has an overall effect of uh, increasing absorption, increases bone mineralization, um, those kinds of things. Um, so. Uh, vitamin D is critical, which is why you would see it with milk, uh, because there's you know calcium in milk and vitamin D in uh, the milk. They kind of go together uh, with that, and then a lot of times you'll see supplements with calcium and vitamin D with that. So, but be careful because um, the you know too much vitamin D can be toxic. So you need to be careful with that. So go by your doctor's recommendation. Um, for that, uh, anyway. Um, ooh, what did I do? Excuse me. I am going to have to increase my slideshow. I'm not sure what happened here, but we will increase it. Not a problem. And we'll go back. And we will just go through the slides just like I would in a regular classroom. Dee, 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 dee. Nothing different here. I'm still. Okay. Oops. Why, is... why are you doing this to me? Oh, I know why. Because I didn't save it. Or say, okay. Uh... Okay, so let's go down to where we were and go to here. Okay. So other things that um, can be modified is if you need to make sure you have plenty of vitamin K. Uh, osteocalcin is um, basically a protein that's that's part of bone, and so you uh, need that for the bone fiber and, and that kind of thing so you need to make sure you have lots of vitamin K uh, which I think we probably mentioned I think we mentioned when we we're talking about that um, bacteria in your intestines so this could be an issue if you take uh, long-term antibiotics and that kind of thing um, B12 uh, it can actually if you have low levels of B12 then you can suppress osteoblasts uh, and then phytoestrogens, um, you can uh, basically help with uh, augmenting estrogens. So remember, phytoestrogens uh, were part of the phytochemicals that we talked about earlier in class. So uh, lots of issues with nutrition. So you just need to make sure you get adequate nutrition. But mainly vitamin D and calcium are the biggies that they'll always talk about so you just need to make sure you get plenty of calcium and plenty of vitamin D and then a, a healthy diet um, then you'll make sure you get enough vitamin K and that kind of thing so not a problem but uh, exercise also plays an extremely important role uh, the more stress you put on your bones the the more the bones are going to respond. Some of you may have had a broken leg or something that caused you to uh, have to not use and put any stress on your bone for quite a quite a long time and what will happen is your bone actually will shrink from lack of of uh, being stressed. So uh, the same thing can happen uh, if you don't do a lot of exercising and don't put a lot of weight bearing stress on your bones they will basically respond by getting smaller. 
So one of the uh, recommendations is to do weight-bearing stress. So obviously walking is a good one. Uh, well, the ultimate would be, you know, pumping weights or doing some weight-bearing exercises on your for your bones. You know, putting stress on your bones and on your vertebral column and that kind of thing when you're younger, and making sure you have as maximum density as possible in that respect but also the the pulling of the tendons on the bones the bones will respond to that stress so walking uh, maybe you might want to carry some weights while walking and put a little bit more weight bearing stress on your bones uh, that might be important uh, in helping to increase density but um, you know it doesn't matter what age you are I mean it's a, it would be very important to start this you know again at age four actually and especially during the teenage years when you get your your rapid bone growth is to get some weight bearing exercise that'd be important for girls to you know be very active um, and uh, put some stress on the bones if possible instead of sitting around playing video games and stuff like that I can definitely envision osteoporosis becoming worse and worse as as kids just sit around and aren't very active I can see it getting worse and worse uh, in the next generation or so uh, doing that um, anyway strength um, rebuilding weakened muscles so muscles are going to help uh, especially around your vertebral column and that kind of thing to keep it uh, strong but uh, strength exercising is going to uh, make sure you have muscles that will help protect uh, your bones and protect you from falling and that kind of thing flexibility exercises uh, very important for you know the, again if you do the the stretching and the flexibility is going to help prevent falls but it also is going to put some stress from the tendons on the bones and and help them to um, increase density uh, Tai Chi and uh, yoga those kinds of things are highly recommended as you get older because again one of the things that causes fractures is falling down so one of the things you lose that as you get older is that center of gravity and what you need to do is try excuse me try to maintain that uh, and uh, so yoga or tai chi or something that uh, you know even martial arts those kinds of things that will help you keep your balance help you keep your center of gravity is going to help you from falling uh, it's not going to really, you know, cause weight bearing on your bones. I mean, it, it does help, but uh, it's the balance issue that's going to become extremely important. So, uh, as you get older, it's it's highly recommended to get into some some way to keep your your center of gravity and your balance so that you don't fall down. So all of these would be modifiable. It's something you need to do, but again the idea would start as early as possible because the weight bearing and so forth is going to increase the amount of bone mass so that when you hit menopause then you'll have as much density as possible especially again if you're very thin tend to be very thin you've always been thin all of your life you need to do something to increase that bone mass uh, because you don't you know you're you don't have a lot of bone mass and so you need to do whatever is possible to decrease the loss uh, because again the bones going to respond to that and decrease the amount of percentage you're still going to lose bone it's just natural it's going to happen i don't think you can ever uh, after you start losing bone you can't ever get to the point where you're depositing more bone than you are uh, decreasing bone that's going to have to happen during your uh, rapid bone growth period during your teenage years um, so again for parents that would be when you'd really encourage your kids to do some exercising do some weight bearing exercise now weight bearing again uh, bicycling is a good exercise but it's not really weight bearing swimming is a good exercise but not really weight bearing so I would encourage you to look up you know uh, uh, what weight bearing exercise, what is considered weight bearing exercise and, and uh, try to incorporate that into your day. Uh, one way that uh, you can uh, increase bone density and have an excuse 
uh, for eating a lot is what you'll notice again is that uh, down in Louisiana and Arkansas and some of those places you notice that they have low bone density and one of the reasons they do is because if you look at the obesity trends that's the highest obesity so obviously if you're obese you're putting a lot of weight on your bones so therefore you could increase bone mass by being obese so if you want an excuse for being heavy you could say well I'm just trying to prevent osteoporosis so what that means is uh, you know when you have a heart attack and you die from a heart attack or from cancer from a stroke or something because of of uh, obesity at least you will have high density bones so you have that going for you anyway whatever so um, modifiable other way smoking alcohol smoking and and the smoke and alcohol suppresses osteoblasts remember osteoblasts are what's going to deposit the bone it's always interested me why they call it osteoblast do you think blast would blow something apart but anyway um, but so you don't want to suppress osteoblasts because that would mean osteoclasts would outwork uh, osteoblasts and then uh, if you take oral contraceptives you want to make sure uh, if they are affecting estrogen activity or reducing estrogen activity then you need to be very aware of that and try to do something the exercise the nutrition get enough calcium that kind of thing because the the idea again is that you know estrogen and vitamin D are going to increase absorption of calcium into the bloodstream if that doesn't occur if you reduce calcium absorption in the bloodstream then the body is going to respond and say hey we don't have enough calcium in the blood we're going to increase osteoclast activity take calcium and so forth from the bone and increase our blood levels uh, because that's more important and then you would decrease bone activity. So, anyway, um, nutrition. What are some of the recommendations? Um, you know, B12. We talked about calcium, 1,200 milligrams per day. Vitamin D, at least a thousand international units per day is recommended by some people. Now, that's not the DRI uh, that you notice, but it is recommended. Uh, again, you don't want to go. Some people recommend 2,000. I would definitely ask my physician what they think and get their recommendation from that. Uh, but about 1,000 international units a day. Vitamin K, make sure you're getting enough of that. Sodium, you might, you know, if you're at high risk, you look at your family history and look at who you are. If you're thin, that kind of thing then you may want to go down to the 1500 milligrams per day of sodium because uh, that could be an issue uh, and then make sure you're getting enough, you know just enough protein to to meet your needs and that kind of thing uh, it's kind of a touchy subject because uh, we kind of mentioned uh, earlier well we I, I guess we'll mention it later when we talk about uh, the older adult but your efficiency of protein goes down as you get older and so you actually have to eat more to get the same amount so that's kind of a touchy one so again I would talk to somebody and make sure that you're doing the right thing especially again if you have a history of osteoporosis um, so prevention exercise weight bearing three times a week for 20 minutes uh, again that doesn't meet that doesn't meet the goal for maintaining weight loss. Remember, we want the 150 minutes per week. Uh, and this is only 60 minutes per week. But if you know the weight bearing issue, um, but you you need to do 20 minutes a day of weight bearing, putting stress on your bones and that kind of thing. Uh, flexibility during your stretching, and then balance two routines a day. You know, trying to do tai chi and then limiting your alcohol so uh, hopefully I've helped you and hopefully you will look at this and look at your history and look at uh, things in your life and see you know if you need to uh, start increasing but again the the idea is to you know especially if you have girls uh, as a parent 
is to make sure that you try to encourage them. Uh, and the reason, you know, one of the reasons they say to start at age four is because that's when they will receive instruction. Uh, as you may or may not know, when they reach teenage years, sometimes they don't take instruction very well. But if you can get them into some kind of a habit of eating well and uh, doing some exercise when they're young, then that's going to be extremely important. So please don't just set them in front of the TV and or the video games or whatever and let them sit there. You need to really think about you know where they're going to be when they are late 40s, 50s, when menopause occurs. So you need to think that far ahead uh, and encourage them, take them out on a hike and do things like that. Okay? So we will see you next time.